doing an overview of the uh, gaseous exchange system or the respiratory system. Um, so a few key things is uh, you need to know about the structure of the respiratory system. So looking at the structure of the organs, you may need, uh, need to know a bit more about the adaptations of the different organs, and you will definitely need to know about the um, the process of uh, of breathing. And the next thing is you need to know about the structure of the alveoli and seeing uh, how it is adapted uh, for efficient gas exchange, which is quite typically a four to five marker question. That can be, it, it can actually be a really nice question because it's really easy to pick up four marks if you know the details of that. So without further ado, let's first of all look at uh, the over, uh, a look at the structure of the system here. So here I've, I've summarized uh, the whole thing, which is the respiratory system facilitates breathing for gaseous exchange, which happens in the alveoli in the lungs. This is the function of the respiratory system. That's the whole point of it. So we can separate it into two major parts. First of all is to look at the concept of breathing. Now, we're really important to remember that breathing is a mechanical process of bringing air into and out of the lungs. So remember that in breathing, we can have uh, two parts of it, which is breathing in and out. So we can have inhalation and also exhalation. As the name implies, inhalation is when you breathe in. So when you're bringing air into your lungs for gas exchange and exhalation is about removing said air. So here we can have an overview of the respiratory system. So we're going to look at few particular organs here. First of all, we can have the nasal cavity here, which is just a fancy term about the nose. So the nasal cavity will be uh, the nose and the mouth where the air first enters. Then the air will go down to the trachea. So the trachea, you can actually feel the trachea if you put your uh, fingers up to your fro and you can, you should be able to feel the ridges of the trachea. So the ridges are actually the C-shaped um, uh, cartilage that holds your trachea up so it prevents it from collapsing. So the air goes down the trachea and it goes, it branches into two parts here and here. Uh, this is called the bronchus. Now bronchus is singular. If it's plural, it's bronchi. So the two bronchus go to the left and the right lungs. Uh, and then finally, uh, and then after, at the end of the bronchi, we can have the bronchioles, which are the smaller branches um, from the bronchus at the end of that. And then uh, at the end of the bronchioles, we'll get to the alveoli, which I'll talk about shortly. Now, there are other structures um, as well that we need to be aware of. So we can have the diaphragm, which is the uh, a piece of muscle that rests underneath our lungs. Now, be very careful of, of the spelling of diaphragm. So it's spelled with PH and a G there, even though it's a silent G. So diaphragm is a muscle, a piece of muscle that contracts and relaxes to help us with the breathing process. We also have uh, ribs, which form our rib cage that protects our lungs and the heart. And we actually, between the ribs, we also have something called the intercostal muscles. I'm gonna color them in very quickly. So you can see the intercostal muscles basically hold the, the rib uh, the ribs together to form the rib cage. And the intercostal muscles, again, is another muscle that is essential in helping us to breathe. So in terms of the pathway of the air, of the air traveling through, it will enter through the nasal cavity, down the trachea, uh, split into the two bronchi, uh, into the bronchioles, and then it reaches the alveoli for gas exchange, where the oxygen goes into blood, carbon dioxide comes out of the blood. So then the air with more carbon dioxide in it goes from the alveoli into the bronchioles, into the bronchi, into the trachea and out through the nasal cavity. So that's the breathing process, the pathway. In terms of the process itself, in terms of inhalation, what will happen is that to start with the diaphragm, which is the muscle will contract and goes down and flattens and the intercostal muscles contract to pull the rib cage up and out. That increases the uh, chest cavity uh, pressure in here, uh, increases the volume, sorry, uh, chest volume, which decreases the pressure so that it's lower than the uh, atmospheric pressure, so the air flows in down the pressure gradient. And in exhalation, the opposite happens. The diaphragm relaxes, comes back up into a dome shape like you can see in this picture here. The intercostal muscles relax to put the, uh, the ribcage goes down and in. That reduces the uh, chest cavity volume increases the chest pressure so that the air flows from the inside the lungs which is a high pressure out of the body which is a lower pressure so that's the exhalation process 
So the next bit to think about is the actual process of gas exchange. Now, gas exchange, as the name implies, is about the gases uh, being moved but across a surface, and that's happening in the alveoli. Now, there are loads of different types of gases in our inhaled air, including uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen is the main one that doesn't get used up, and uh, argon, water vapor, etc. In the case of gas exchange, what we're focusing on is the, um, is the intake of oxygen and the uh, outtake of carbon dioxide. So let's start looking at the structure of the alveoli to see how this happens. So in this case, we've got one alveolus and each alveolus uh, ha is wrapped around by capillaries. So first thing to remember is that we've got the inhalation happening, which is when the oxygen comes in and the exhalation brings the carbon dioxide out of the alveoli. So there are a few uh, adaptations to particularly think about. So first of all, let's look at the actual alveolus. So you can see in the alveolus, um, the alveolus is made of a single layer. The wall of the alveolus is just one cell thick. So it's got extremely thin walls. Now in a previous video, I have actually mentioned that capillaries are also one cell thick and you can see this here exactly the same way. So the capillaries also have a thin wall. Uh, as you can see in this picture. So the idea of having a one cell thick wall means you've got a short diffusion distance so the oxygen can actually enter very quickly and be transported away and the carbon dioxide can also exit the blood uh, very quickly. So both the capillary and the uh, alveoli have thin walls allowing a short diffusion distance for faster diffusion. Another thing is that the alveoli, because there's so many of it, we say that, and they've got a spherical shape, they've got a high surface area to volume ratio, which again speeds up uh, the rate of diffusion. Um, the existence of the capillaries, we also, we call this that, uh, we say that they have lots and lots of capillaries. So an extensive uh, capillary network. Now the benefit of this is that it can have, uh, because there's so many capillaries around it, the moment the oxygen goes into the blood, uh, it can be quickly carried away. So we mean that uh, this means that you are maintaining a steep concentration gradient for faster diffusion. So remember the oxygen will then, uh, the carbon dioxide diffuses out of the bloodstream and the oxygen goes in. And the moment it goes in, it's carried away. So you're keeping a high, a low concentration of oxygen in the blood and a high concentration of oxygen in the uh, alveolus. So again, that's about a steep concentration gradient. So as the blood comes in through this way, it, it was originally deoxygenated, but as the blood leaves the alveoli, uh, they become oxygenated and then will go back to the heart to be delivered to the rest of the body. Uh, some other things that you can also mention is that the um, there are loads of alveoli around, so there's so many of them, again, further increasing the surface area to volume ratio. Uh, and also alveoli itself, are quite, they're quite elastic, so it's allowing that ventilation to happen, which maintains, again, a concentration gradient. Notice the difference between these two. The ventilation is about maintaining steep concentration gradient inside the alveoli and outside of it, whereas the, uh, the ex uh, extensive capillary uh, network with lots and lots of capillaries is about maintaining that steep concentration gradient between the bloodstream and the alveoli. So the, even though the explanation for these two adaptations are the same, they're actually talking about the gradient between two different places. So uh, in the types of questions you get is about explaining the adaptations of the alveoli for efficient gas exchange, then what you need to mention is, uh, first of all, you need to talk about the actual uh, adaptation. So lots of capillaries, thin walls, uh, uh, regular ventilation, high surface area to volume ratio. And then the explanation is the blue bit here, which is about, you know, how do these adaptations work, which is the whole point is short diffusion distance, steep concentration gradient, all of it is about increasing, massively increasing the rate of diffusion. And remember that diffusion is to allow the oxygen to go into the bloodstream and the carbon dioxide to go out, which is the whole point of gas exchange. So there you have it, that is the human respiratory system, uh, the structure of it, and also how gas exchange is, um, uh, 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 it happens in the alveoli and how it's adapted for it.